Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows 10 running on the all new Odroid H2 Plus. Now this is a new board from Hard Kernel and we really can't call it a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi because we do have to add our own RAM and storage. But either way you look at it, this does have a little something over let's say the XU4, the Raspberry Pi 4 or even any other ARM based single board computer out there because this is running an x86 CPU and that's going to allow us to install Windows 10 natively on this machine. If you check out the link in the description, I have done kind of a review video of this board running Ubuntu, but I really wanted to test Windows 10 on here because like I said, we have an x86 CPU and we can just install it right to the M.2 or a 2.5 inch SSD if you want to do it that way. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. But first up, I'm going to go over the basic specs. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave some links in the description. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron J4115. This is a quad core CPU at up to 2.5 gigahertz on a single thread or 2.3 on all four threads. Like I mentioned, you do have to add your own RAM and storage. So what I did was add eight gigs of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. It's set up in dual channel mode, as you can see here. And I've installed a Western Digital Black 256 gigabyte M.2. The board itself comes in at $119, and with all of the additions that I added here, I'm up to around $180 into the Odroid H2 Plus for the configuration you're going to see running in this video. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into Windows 10 Pro. Okay, so here we are. I'm running Windows 10 from that M.2 drive. We have the J4115 CPU at 1.8 GHz. It does have a burst up to 2.5 on a single core and 2.3 on all four cores. 8 gigs of DDR4, 2400 MHz RAM, and that built-in UHD Intel 600. So if we go over here to, let's say, graphics, we can see the core speed of this GPU. And it does go all the way up to 750 MHz, like advertised. I'm pretty surprised at how well it does run. Now, for a lot of people, if they just want to use this as, let's say, a Windows PC for web browsing, you're going to have no issue at all. I'm connected over Ethernet right now, and I do have a pretty good internet connection in my office here. But I mean, just scrolling through the web, go to a couple web pages here. I mean, it feels fast. It's very snappy, very responsive. Uh, WebGL works pretty decently also. So at 500 fish, we're sitting around 50. I mean, it's not the best that I've seen but it's definitely not the worst that I've seen either. As for 4K video playback, let's go full screen with this. I do have stats for nerds going on right here. We have a window view size of 1080, but the video is playing at 4K. This is my go-to test video. 4K 60 FPS. This is much better than it was in Ubuntu using Chromium or Firefox. Skip ahead a bit. You can see we do have some drop frames, but as many as we're dropping here, you would never notice it if I had this turned off. So 4K60 through YouTube or any other streaming app or website, it's going to work fine here. Next thing I wanted to test was kind of a high bitrate 4K 30fps video. 83 megabits per second. H.264, 4K, and I want to say this is 30, yeah, 30 FPS. So from Plex, 4K 30 is perfectly fine here. I don't have any 4K 60 to test, but I'm pretty sure this little chip would handle it. And finally, for video playback, we'll go to everybody's favorite media playback application. And we'll do some native 4K60. And again, natively playing this from the M.2, 4K60 HEVC. We're using the hardware decoder right here. Super smooth playback. So as a little media center, I mean, the H2 Plus definitely does a great job. 
I also wanted to test out Cineventure R15 and I knew it wasn't going to be great here because we're only working with 4 cores at 2.3 GHz when they're maxed out. And with this test, higher is better. As you can see, the H2 Plus with the Intel J4115 only scored a 214 and I threw a couple other lower end chips in there just to give you a look. I also ran a quick blender test. Well, it wasn't that quick on the Intel J4115. We rendered out this BMW test in 8 minutes and 50 seconds. As you can see, the Ryzen 2200G did it in 3 minutes and 29, and the i3-8100 did it in 3 minutes and 10 seconds. The next thing I wanted to test here was some 4K video editing. Now, a small computer like this is definitely not built for it, but it is possible if you're patient. What I have here is OpenShot. I tested the same thing with Ubuntu. I have three 4K 30fps clips here. I've added four simple transitions. And in order to export this H.264 4K 24fps, it took me 13 minutes and 53 seconds. Now with Ubuntu, it was a little over 20 minutes with the same setup here. My CPU did hit a maximum of 81 degrees Celsius, even with this big heatsink on it, so I would definitely recommend some type of active cooling on this if you're going to be stressing that CPU out for more than 10 minutes. But it didn't thermal throttle because I do have this set up in the BIOS to start thermal throttling at 90 degrees Celsius. So I mean 4K video editing on a board like this is possible, but you're going to have to have some patience. Moving over to some PC gaming, we have Rocket League 720p, the lowest settings I could go, and we're getting an average of 34 FPS. But when it comes to PC gaming, this little board should not be your first choice. I mean, it does a pretty good job with older Valve Source games, like Half-Life, Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, and Portal. But it does struggle with more demanding games. Here we have Overwatch, low settings, 50% resolution scale, 720p, and it's really hard to get a constant 30 with this one here. I also wanted to test CSGO in the original Skyrim, but unfortunately when I was recording here, the sound stopped through my game capture. And this actually happens a lot with these lower end chips like the J4105, the N4000, and even the N4100. I'm not exactly sure why it happens, but the sound is coming through the monitor. I mean, you're not going to lose it completely. But either way you look at it with CSGO, very low settings, 720p, we're breaking around 35 FPS. And even with the OG Skyrim, it's hard to break 30. I mean, every once in a while it'll jump up to around 42, but I'm pretty much stuck at 30, 720p, low settings with Skyrim here. Now this board was definitely not made for gaming, and it's pretty awesome to see these games running at at least 30 on it. But like I said, don't go out and pick up this board specifically for PC gaming. So as we saw, native PC gaming on a machine like this isn't great, so that's where these cloud services come in like Stadia or my choice, GeForce Now. This will allow me to play my favorite PC games from a computer that can actually handle them. And I'm gonna go into Dauntless real quick. Just a little tip here, press Control Alt F6 on your keyboard and you'll have your FPS listed up in the top left hand corner when you're in GeForce Now. I'm going to head to my options, I'm at 1080p, epic settings, and I'm getting a constant 60 here. As long as you have a decent internet connection, this is going to work out just fine on a board like this. But in the end, I'm still impressed with the Windows performance of the Odroid H2+. Now, if you want to use this like most people use their desktops, checking emails, watching YouTube, Netflix, editing some Word documents. You could even do some light image editing on this machine. It's perfectly capable to do all of that, whether you're using Windows 10 here or a distribution of Linux. I've tested Ubuntu on it. Personally, I think when I'm done with all of my testing on the H2+, Plus, I'm gonna install Pop! OS on it and just use it as a secondary Linux PC. But if you need a small, low-powered computer that can run Windows 10, I really do think that this is a viable option. Now, if I didn't do any video editing or recording or anything like that, I could use this as my main PC. I'd definitely be giving up some of my native PC gaming, but I could always use GeForce Now or Stadia on a machine like this and be perfectly content. 
So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out the Linux performance on this using Ubuntu with GNOME, definitely check out my first video that I posted. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And of course, I will have a full emulation video coming up. I was really trying to decide what operating system I should run. I could run Linux and install RetroPie, run Laka, or just Bado Serra off of a USB drive. But I think I will be doing all of my testing with Windows because some of the emulators that I like to use, like PS2 and PSP, will perform better on a board like this with DirectX. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.